I know, I know. I've been doing this a lot, a lot of cold starts in the start of the video, but I love it. You guys love it. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are actually working on our Super Duty. That's the plan anyways. Uh, let's go in the shop and we'll talk. So we're in the garage now. Uh, I'm going to do a little cleanup from yesterday, but if you didn't see our last video, we threw a light bar up on this, this thing. Took it out last night. Of course it was raining all yesterday. So this thing, the wheels are just disgusting. Shit ton of mud on it, but uh, tow rope actually did not bad. I added a strap there. I didn't show that, but kind of happy with that. So let's do a little start on this thing. I know it doesn't sound that impressive. Stock exhaust, but. Today on the video, once I back this thing out without hitting anything, got to go ahead. Oh, clear. Oh yeah, there we go. Love this thing. Okay, so here's the plan for today. If you didn't see our delete video, um, well, you wouldn't have seen this, but if you did, you know what's in here. We have a Dirty Diesel's uh, EGR delete um, kit from them. So, get that out. Let's see what we got in the box here. So, real simple. It's got all the hardware that you need, apparently. So, what's there? And then you got your block off tickets. So, I don't want to scratch these, but one block off plate. This will be the um, one that actually goes on the EGR that will be hot or off the manifold. And then we have our big coolant plate so that is what we got in this kit i forget how much i paid for that but we do have that we're going to try and get this done today of course we'll go through the instructions and then also we have a smeating diesel um let's see I forget what this oh yeah so this is a ccv delete so crankcase ventilation the reason you want to do one of these on a, well, 6-7 power stroke, doesn't matter what year it is, um, what can happen when you turn these suckers up, they make a lot more crankcase pressure. Um, so with the factory, uh, how do I say this, factory ventilation system, it has a filter. It runs through that filter. Well, when the filter gets plugged, um, that causes higher current case pressure. Well, pressure's got to go somewhere. So what has been happening is it blows out the front structure on these trucks. Now, it doesn't seem like that big of an issue, but these uh, Super Duties here, of course, you can see there's just a jumble of pipes and mess under the hood. Well, from what I've heard and what I've read and researched, to do that front structure, the oil pan has to come off. To get the oil pan off, you have to pull the transmission out. Just alone, you're probably 10 hours just doing the front structure and that's not even putting it all back together. So, for people that are deleting their trucks and don't have warranty anymore, this is something you really, really wanna do so you don't have to do that. So, it's a super simple setup. Um, I don't even think this was 120 bucks Canadian. But you open up this. 
course, one hand is always hard. But you have one side, this is a block off plate. And then you have this will where your blow by tube will go, which that's this thing. If you didn't know, this is just three quarter inch heater hose, but this will be technically a blow by tube. So any crankcase pressure, it will come out this fitting, through this fitting and go to the earth. So what it's for, the only thing you guys want to do, now other things I've heard is you don't want to drain this or <laughs> you don't want it to drain. You don't want it to go under the like the driver's side of the cab. Just with kind of the oil that you'll have, you'll get that little bit of a smell. So what we're going to try and do is route it to the passenger side, make a drip over there. And then, uh, yeah. But let's go ahead. We'll start with the CCV and then we'll get on to the EGR in the back half of this video. All right, so this is my first time doing this with along with you guys. Um, but there's two fuel lines here. Return line, it looks like. Um, down here, and then there's this one. These clips, you just kind of have to pull these little white deals. They'll pop out of the way. So and then, we gotta go ahead, we gotta pull these off. So there's a few bolts, 10 mil head. So we'll just start pulling these out. Lines are disconnected. We got the four bolts out of this uh, crankcase filter set up. Now I just got to figure out how this little doodad comes off of here. I don't know if it's a pull or if it's a twist. How that works. There it is. Get that off. Let's see if we can wrestle this out. So there's that. Okay, so let's just go over what I did there. So you see there that hole in the back, it's got two screws on it. That's two of your hold down bolts. Then you got one up here at the front, right there. And then there's another one right there. So you do that, this line, this line, this line has to be disconnected. And then you gotta pop this little deal off. So this is what the clamp looks like. It's got three little keepers on it. You just have to kind of pry those out of the way and that sucker will pull off. So mine, as soon as it came loose, this actually slid in. So it slid up this little collar and then the hose popped off. Really not too bad. I don't know. I haven't been doing this for about 10 minutes and I already got this sucker off. So here is this big ugly piece of crap. So. There's your two rear bolts, your front bolt, and then there's your top bolt. So this is what we're deleting today. So looking at our parts, this one will be our lower one, lower block off. So that is replacing this, just like that. And this deal is right here, bolts in the back. And then we'll have our 90 degree fitting, that kind of good stuff. And then there is this little rubber deal. So I'm guessing this will be, it'll go over there. So I got this all installed. Um, there's that front block off plate. And then we got the rear one on. I installed the fitting first. It is loose because we're going to go ahead. We'll tighten that afterwards. So I tried routing this hose. I have a couple options, but uh, they end up going kind of by the exhaust. So what we're going to jump into now is let's get this EGR cooler out. Uh, kind of looks like it's about to rain, but we'll just keep at it. So this big thing right here, that'll be what's coming out next. Um, so probably I'll just stick you guys on a time lapse. I'll start ripping and tearing, and then first thing you want to do, drain your uh, your engine coolant. There's a little drain valve right in here. Should be able to see it where that blue hose goes. It's kind of tricky. You gotta turn it so it'll start uh, vertical. You'll turn it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And then at that point you turn it another 90 degrees but you kind of have to pull out. Mine was really stiff but I just played with it back and forth, finally got it out. 
So the instructions say drain about 12 liters. We're just going to fill up our pail because there's no issue. We got lots of room. So use a clean bucket because you will want to reuse this coolant when we're done. Okay, so first thing you guys want to do, pull your air intake. Super simple. And then we're going to the lines. Then you got to pull that EGT probe. Once you're done that, you have a long and you have the short EGR pipes. They're just super simple. 8 mil with a ratchet. Pull those out. Once you get that done, now you have seven bolts that hold the EGR down. Um, I'll try and put a picture up here that shows you every single one that you need to get at. There's three on the top, three on the bottom, and then one kind of in the center at the front. Rear one's a little bit tricky to get at, um, but not too bad. Once you get that done, we're pretty much right on to the block off plates. There's three bolts on the rectangular long one, two on the other one. Make sure you uh, clean all your O-rings, make sure that's all good. Moving along here, um, once you're at this point, tape. Uh, so you want dielectric grease, tape up the connectors we're not going to use anymore. And then just go ahead and wrote some lines, wrote all your electrical, tape them up really good, and button it all back up with coolant okay so we got the EGR delete done um, I'm just letting it cycle right now trying to bleed some of the air out um, just in the cooling system but here's this EGR so this sucker is massive so here's your coolant ports that's what that other plate is um, that of course that we put on there that big black rectangular one but there's seven bolts that hold it on so there's six Across the length, you can see every single bolt. Um, and then there's one more. And that's right here. So you got one, two, one there. And then you got your three on the bottom. So one, two, three. And of course this is the bottom. This will be the top side. Um, but yeah, really simple to do. The only other thing I did a little different um, then kind of how the kit does Sorry, it's a little loud I redid these hoses So this is usually right here And they just get you to reuse this and then barb it in to make it longer I took it all apart. I switched this gear around Just so it points a little different and make it look a little better And uh, yeah, this is kind of what we've ended up with so Super happy with how that turned out. And yeah, we'll just let it run. We'll let it cycle from here. Get it hot. And you'll just want to, when you're doing this first heat cycle, Once I kind of heat cycle this once, then I will route my uh, blow by tube and we'll show you guys that. So I went ahead, we got this sucker routed. So you can see, it comes off our 90 back in there. Boom, 90 comes up. I got it running over the intake. There's no heat up there. Then it runs down kind of under your uh, exhaust back pressure sensor. And then it runs out the other side. Where if you come over here, it comes down. I got it so it's running on the outside of the frame. Then all I did is I took drilled two holes, put a zip tie here. And what that's doing is that's keeping this from hitting. There's some wires that come in here. Gotta be careful, you don't want it rubbing. And then I just have it short and it's cut. So now I'll be able to come over here. I'll be able to check it in the winter. And or you'll be able to see that it's, you know, there's some air flowing out of there. There should be a little bit of blow by. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll fire this sucker up again and uh, see what it's like. 
Come in. Just gonna set you guys down. So, show you guys. No codes up on the dash, other than the doors open and the hoods open. This does have the AM, AM diesel performance. Uh, six and a quarter horse tune. It's their five level. We got the switch on the fly deal. Been super happy. It's also got trans tuning. Flow Pro five inch exhaust. Now, these are things you will not want to do unless you have delete tuning done to your vehicle. You'll have all kinds of codes. It won't be good. So, there's that again. Check. No more leaks. We're gonna go drive it. Hopefully, the fluid will go down a little bit. This bucket, there's, I don't know, probably three, four inches in the bottom. So, I'm guessing uh, about four liters or a gallon of, of coolant is left. Now, your uh, EGR here, like this sucker, it probably holds all that fluid. So, we're not gonna throw that stuff out. I'm gonna take old washer fluid jugs. We're gonna save that fluid because we'll probably need them. But we'll just come over here. I can feel like a little bit on there, but not much. So, real good. Thank you for tuning into the channel, watching this video. If you're doing the same thing to your 2020 or newer 6.7, um, I hope this will be helpful. Come back for our next video. We'll be heading uh, quadding for May Long here pretty soon. So there'll be lots of content coming up.